Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Monday afternoon. Hope you're well, hope you had a good weekend, hope you're having a good week or there's a good planned week of what you've got going up this week. Apologies for the lack of videos over the weekend. It was my birthday weekend and I spent it just trying to enjoy as much time as possible with the people that I care about most. So jumping into this video, we're going to talk about the player that played yesterday in the cup final in Conor Gallagher and his contract situation update, as well as Spurs potentially rekindling an interest in a the player they once had. You'll see what I mean in a second, don't worry. Just want to say if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And uh, let's talk this Conor Gallagher one first. It came from Graham Bailey. And he said that Conor Gallagher wants to stay at Chelsea and he has not been offered a new contract. The issue I... The issue I think with this is that he's a Chelsea boy, he's a vice captain, he you know, obviously probably wants to be the actual captain as well. You know, he, he's happy. The issue is their financial fair play situation is kind of just way more important than his happiness. What I mean by that is they really, really need to get some money and profit through into the club. So, you know, when you look at a Conor Gallagher, you look at a Mando Broya, you know, you're looking at these guys who are all academy products. They are 100% to your financial fair play. And, and Gallagher, he, he in the summer will only have one year left on his contract. It will be either you sign a contract that favours probably Chelsea more than anything, or we're selling you. Because there will be clubs that want him. And, and as much as he might go, no, I want to stay, they'll go... You don't really have an option in this. The fact they've not offered him a contract now, and it's obviously the February, it's February 26th, that's quite alarming. They obviously, what I mean by that, sorry, is they've obviously offered him a contract, but they haven't offered him a new one because he rejected the last ones. That's what I mean by it's alarming because this is a situation that I would say if it comes to April, or even May, and that contract still is not signed, he still hasn't you know, extended his time, he's getting sold in the summer because they need money by the end of June. As soon as the season's done, they'll be looking at Pete clubs going, what would you give us for Gallagher? Because that's what they were, they were up. I think Gallagher will probably sign a contract fairly easily, but he's not going to get the money that he wants because, again, that hurts your financial fair play if you obviously give someone a pay rise. It's going to be on Chelsea's terms, and that's what you've got to be wary of. Um, but I, I, don't, I still see him getting sold because I still think they need to get the money in. And he's the guy that's going to get them the most money. But let's talk this Kyle Walker-Peters situation. So if you're not aware, Kyle Walker-Peters is a fullback at Southampton. He was a Spurs player a few years ago. Um, came a team talk that said that Tottenham are being tipped to activate a £30 million buy up, buyback option on Kyle Walker-Peters this summer after Manchester United and Arsenal interest. So he... This is the big thing about Kyle Walker-Peters, especially how we play inverted fullbacks, right? He's the guy that plays left-back and right-back. He's a right-footer, but he can play both sides. Homegrown academy option as well, which I think is another big thing you can kind of tick off the list. And he's not a, a homegrown academy option that you just have in the squad because he's there to make up a number and a, on a quota. He's a guy that would actually help you. And I'm going to be honest, he's better than the other fullbacks that we have behind the main two that we have. Behind Adogi and behind per Poro, I think Kyle Walker-Peters is better than the rest that we've got behind that. And the fact that Kyle Walker-Peters can play both... You know, if you needed a Destiny or let's say Destiny or Pedro had to miss a game from suspension, like a five booking situation, you'd feel pretty confident with Kyle Walker Peters going in there. He can defend, he can actually you know, get on the ball and create. The fact he can play both sides, you know, those things are quite important. And I think a lot of people go, we should never have sold him. Look, we've had to buy, buy back double. He probably had the footballing education that he was, that most players would want, that he, wouldn't get, he wasn't going to get. At Spurs, because, you know, Trippier was there and then you, we spent all the money on Emerson. You know, he, he was probably never going to get the development that he would have wanted. So at Southampton, he did. And look, we probably sold him for about 10, 15 million anyway, if I remember correctly. OK, he spent a bit bit more on that. It doesn't really matter, if I'm honest. I, I'm, I'm, I would be, and actually I'll say this now, I'd be happy for if Carl Walker-Peters were the fullback that we bought this summer. I'd be very happy. Tell you who he is, Carl Walker Peters. Um, he's 26 at the moment. He'll be 27 on April 13th. And um, his contract does expire in the summer of 2025, which is big. And also, his player agent, CAA Base Limited, which is a um, an agency that Spurs have used 
countless times. You know, a lot of the players they've had are represented as well by them. Um, looking at this season, he's played 34 games across the Championship. He scored two and assisting two. He's played just over 3,000 minutes. You can say he's a regular man at a team that is, you know, is, is a good Championship side. For me, it's a yes. I'll say it now. For me, it's a yes. It just makes a little bit more sense than some of the other fullback options we've had. The fact that you can play both of those sides, I think, is really, really key. I still think you would need to buy, you know, if we consider Carl Peters as the right back, by the way, I still think you need to buy a left back. I do. I just think the the options that we have are very limited. And if you have Carl Walker Peters, and even if Carl Walker Peters was your third fullback, and, you know, if one of those two didn't start, he starts the other side, I'm fine. But I would like another fullback. If there's someone coming through the system, fine. If there's not, I would like us to go and grab one. But the thing that I would say is, Inverted fullback, he could play both sides of that, which is a big thing for Andrew's system. So I'm interested to see what you guys think about it, because obviously we've not talked about Cole Peters before, and I think it's nice when we don't, when, sorry, when we do speak about someone that we haven't spoken before, you get a real fresh idea of what you guys want and what I want, or if we don't want, you know, all that stuff in the middle. But anyway, guys, then if you hope you enjoyed, drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section below your thoughts and feelings about Carl Peters and, you know, would you want him, would you not? And also the update on Conor Gallagher's contract situation. Interesting to know what you think about that one as well. And do you think he's going to sign one? Do you think he's going to get sold? You tell me. Obviously, subscribe if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. Better guys in the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.